All right, let me start with the, with this. Uh, it kind of, uh, this uh, topic happened like uh, on last week uh, on some uh, like mailing list, uh, like submission by Roman, and we thought, okay, let, let's discuss in person uh, something more. So the, here, I will be kind of driving the discussion. Roman will like comment, answer, question, whatever, and he will uh, support. So let me go over the agenda. So, so here I'm kind of going over in, a, in the order of the least controversial. So, so the first one is mostly like a, all of us kind of agree, and then the next and the last is the most controversial stuff. All right. Actually, this should be the second and third, anyways. All right, so, so the first, I think what uh, the past set was posted last week was uh, moving all the V1 only code into a separate file and put it behind a config, file, uh, config option. And by default it's enabled, but uh, the, f uh, the users which use only the V2, they can disable it and don't need to have all the V1 code or the fields and uh, like built into the kernel. So um, would it be better to uh, have the config option disabled by default? Uh, at the start, I think we cannot, uh, uh, like uh, we will break. Uh, no, 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 you, you will not break anything because uh, whoever really uh, required that functionality can enable it. It's just that once something is enabled by default, you will never get rid of that. So uh, uh, it, it's not removing the functionality, it's just make it clear that this is less of a priority. You can still enable that. Uh, uh, we can even uh, document that uh, new features are not really uh, going to be welcome unless mm -hmm. they uh, V2 can benefit from that as well. So I don't know. I, I would just suggest to start by start uh, having that config option disabled uh, by default. Okay. Okay. I think uh, any other than Google, uh, anyone else using V1? Android is moving moving to the V2, right? Yeah, yeah. What about the Oracle? Uh, those for, oh, yeah. yeah, so we have it. Android has it enabled by default. Um, it's not actually used by the framework for much of anything anymore. It used to be used for PSI and LMKD and stuff, but uh, it is still enabled. And some devices, very few of them, do use, use it for per app MemCGs in the V1 hierarchy. Um, but that's a very small subset. And uh, I think. We're in the process of migrating to V2 right now anyway, so I don't think it will be an issue. So, so this option should be okay for you by default. It's disabled and yes. enabled, like, okay, yeah. okay. So do we know what distro Linux runs and whether it needs V1? Say again? What distro Linux runs <laughs> and whether it will break after he runs a new kernel and doesn't enable it? I don't think that it will break anything uh, because uh, uh, systemd is slowly moving to v2 only and what I have seen is that we have essentially two class of users of v1 those who do that intentionally because uh, they know why they do okay. why do they do that and those who don't know why they do that it's just they have been doing that for years and maybe they haven't even realized that there is a much better interface for them to use. And uh, that's why I would like to have that disabled because uh, mm -hmm. that might motivate them to uh, realize that there is something better for them. Uh, most likely they will get back to us why that decision has been made. And uh, we can say, okay, uh, do you have strong reasons to use V1? Uh, do you miss any features? There is, have you heard about that V2 that mm -hmm. it's already production ready and, uh, and something that you should be looking at? Um, sure. So that's the thinking behind that disabled by default. Okay, okay. So, so mainly, uh, okay, system D, like, like most of the distributions are using system D and it handles V2 and should be able to work out of the box. Yes. Yes, but then you have also container environments that are using uh, legacy uh, uh, C groups, some of them without any good reason, except yeah. that they have been doing that and nobody has done that work to mm -hmm. transfer mm -hmm. that to V2. Makes sense. 
Uh, I would also add that like distributions are not really an issue because I mean they do an upgrade of the kernel and check their config options and if they realize they still need v1 they're going to enable it so really what, what you could break is somebody who compiles their own kernel and runs stuff and then it doesn't work okay. it, it doesn't feel like it would be breaking something in production Hope, hopefully that doesn't happen in production sure. should be okay for Google as well right yeah, uh, Roman, any comments? Yeah, my only concern was about like if we disable it by default, we should be careful with with not breaking the compilation of that code. But it's kind of it's a pain either way. So I'm, I'm kind of flexible. Okay. Like if, okay. if everybody agrees that disabling by default from scratch is better, like I'm totally up for it. My plan was to kind of wait a year maybe or before switching, but yeah, we can do it right now. All right. Okay, uh, let me uh, go through the the kind of the, the deprecation process I'm kind of proposing. Uh, it, it's kind of like we already tested with the uh, memcg uh, v1 kernel memory accounting. So it's something on along the same line, like first add the warnings and then wait for some time. I think here we want to discuss how much and and also like backport uh, the warnings to the all the LT LTS as well, and then number three, rather than removing like make them no op, so there uh, like that will be like we can remove clean up all the code, uh, interface they are fine, many of the like I think tools use space tools which like look at the files and just uh, like either fail or not should be fine. But overall, like that's the, the, the process I think uh, we already kind of tested with the uh, kernel memory accounting for the V1. So any concerns here? That how much, because that no matter how much we define is enough, it won't. So um, at least I think the, the uh, it depends like uh, for the users, which are we are collab like communicating upstream, which do report something, and, and particularly I think the here the distributions uh, as well uh, can report. Uh, to me, if, for the kernel mem, I think it was like two two releases or three releases or something we, where we add the warning to the like kind of it, make it a no op uh, uh, thing. So again, I, I'm uh, kind of open, but uh, I, I think. Uh, there, one thing we learned was removing the file kind of break the users. Uh, it, it might be kind of like we know who, who break and they kind of fix their user space as well. But uh, I, I think uh, just keeping the file and making them know of at least let us do the cleanup stuff. So which specific action would trigger the warning? Uh, it depends on the feature and the interface. The feature is like, for example, the, for the kernel memory uh, accounting, it was the memory dot kmem dot limit in bytes, or something like right to that. Uh, there will be warning, uh, and uh, yeah. So, so that particular example was uh, um, has shown how the deprecation process is impossible to get right because. Uh, uh, we have removed the file that has regressed uh, Docker, I believe. Uh, we have uh, tried to fail any attempt to write to that file that has regressed in something else. And uh, uh, the only thing that we have realized in the end was that we just don't do anything, which yeah. is probably the most risky thing because uh, the, uh, the failure is just silent. Uh, uh, so my question would be, uh, do we really want or need to uh, deprecate feature by feature or just uh, put the V1 aside and let it die by lack of attention? Uh, <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, you, you have something? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, Greg from Google wasn't able to attend, but I'll uh, I'll try to speak for him. <laughs> so there are some features in V1 that just do not have a way forward in V2, but still have a valid use case. Uh, the most obvious one to me is mem swap accounting, the combined memory and swap accounting. 
there's just no way forward for that. And we have, for example, jobs that they know what their usage would be. They don't know if they would be running with swap or not. So they just set the mem swap limit, and then they could run with swap or without swap. They wouldn't be affected. For v2, they need to know how to set their memory and swap limits separately. So that's so, one. So we are we are going to go to the, that particular feature later. Uh, mainly, I, I think the question which uh, Michael was saying is setting aside the v1 features at, at the side. Don't worry about the deprecation. Let it rot, and in some feature <laughs> we will. Uh, so that's the, I think is command was or or we just go uh, iteratively, slowly deprecate feature by feature. So just a, a question. So when we're referring to this talk, so this is all about memcg v2, not secret v2, right? Yes, yes, okay. memcg v1, v2. So this is worthy of like probably a bigger discussion about how, how is the most effective way to deprecate a feature in yeah, yeah. Linux? And I would contend that nobody's going to look at the kernel log. Nobody's giving a care what appears there if it just works. So it seems like there's multiple strategies here we could do, like the mount option, or we could do something where you have to flip a syscuddle to be able to say that you're going to use this. Dapp dash do something manually to be able to surface that you want this feature available to you. Otherwise, it's just going to return e and val. I would say that you would want to do it all across the board for all the features that you want to deprecate, because otherwise you're just going to have a very long tail. Yeah. So the the, the syscuddle and the, any the you're saying is more of a like enable disable, and the feature will be either available or not. Yeah, because so just the the person who's using I could be wrong that the person who's using the C group uh, hierarchy mm -hmm. is not necessarily the person who's in control of defining your dot config file. So even if this is disabled by default and somebody says, okay, well I need it, I'll enable it. You as the user who may care about it in a sub container may be oblivious, and you need to change, but now you have no insight that you need to change. And so something that's maybe in the memcg level to say, okay, I need to have permissions. When you delegate these permissions to me for a task or for memory dot, uh, limited bytes, I have to flip a knob to say I want to opt into these interfaces. I have to do something explicit. Otherwise, after an LTS release or so, you can go ahead and remove it. I just have to think the user has to do something to be aware that, yeah, it's going to be going away. <laughs> I, I just wanted to add, do we think, um, hi, hi, this is Johannes. Um, do we think that all features are are equally important there? I mean, so if we take a look at V1 features, right, and we know there are some users um, still left, but then V1 has fairly invasive bits and pieces that we think that probably nobody's using anymore, right, like charge moving. You know, once we have V1 code <laughs> in a separate file and we manage to deprecate one of the larger, more invasive features that is unlikely to have any users left. You know, I, I don't know if there's such a high pressure to to um, to get rid of the other stuff, right? It's, it's not all the same, right? Um, and I, I think once we get get rid of the, the biggest um, the biggest um, uh, tentacles uh, in other MM code and just have like we want interface files and, you know, soft limit reclaim and a couple of smaller things like this, I think it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to just let it be there until we're definitely sure nobody's using this anymore without creating a lot of pressure. Yeah, I, I would agree. And also, I, I think it really should be treated in the context of like the whole C group we want to forget. So maybe it's the right moment to put a warning uh, into like mounting C group we want hierarchy in general, not particularly a MemCG controller, and say that, hey, we kind of planning to deprecate group we one as a whole at some point later and like kind of cause users who are not aware of this uh, to start moving maybe a little bit more aggressively. But yeah, the reality is like we will need to support mcg one functionality for next like several years. So, so one thing, the, the way I am looking at, uh, I'm, I, I'm wanna go through is to actually look at the V1 features, right? Mm -hmm. And actually see uh, if there are any, like currently here users and what are the alternatives there are or if there are no one users there. So at, at least this exercise I think I, I, I want to do is to get, Johannes, just to uh, say, uh, like, okay, just uh, rather than big features, there are a lot of things which are not being used. 
and we can kind of iteratively like remove those as well. But again, I think that's I want to go through the the list, and then we we can discuss uh, one by one in each feature. What do you think? Yeah, I think that, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I, I it just felt like the discussion was about like how do we get rid of all of it and <laughs> going feature by feature. I think makes a ton of sense. Yeah, at least we can discuss feature by feature, right? So yeah. So so uh, I'm again going through the these features in a reverse. Uh, controversial way. Uh, the end is the most controversial. Well, uh, I know. So, so uh, okay. The, the first one, the the move charge. It, we already have added a warning uh, in 2022. We have backported uh, to the like to LTS 5.4 plus kernels. And uh, I think the next question is again uh, here. We have to decide uh, when we should make it no op. And I think this is the one which is the most messier one. Because uh, it's not even like it's a best effort, not reliable, and has the most uh, like complex or like make the code more complex, particularly the locking and stuff here. So yeah, so so, so this one is I, I think the like all of us kind of agree that uh, it, we should deprecate it, and the second uh, I think the main decision is at what time we should go and make it an op and do the cleanup. Is the not really right way to do that? Uh, wouldn't failure in this case, um, especially after having th that warning uh, there for a year, uh, would be a better way? Because uh, if this is just a no op, then we have just changed from best effort to the worst effort. <laughs> I think we can decide to uh, error out or the no op or, or something else. But, but at the end, what we want is just, just the cleanup, right? Remove all those locking and stuff, right? We, we, yeah, qu quite honestly, if that code is moved away to v1 file and it's out of sight and it doesn't really make uh, uh, any changes to mem control harder, uh, I mean to it, v2. It, 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 does. It, does. it does. It does. Yeah. It just like it makes it a relation between a page and a folder and memcg not stable, so you need additional locking. I mean, like I don't know, uh, write that code, for example. It has yeah, that, that actually spreads pretty far into the rest of the VM, right? Like yeah. um, every time you update right back stats, or you, like you mark page thirty, or um, yeah. any of those, you need to you need to call into lock page memcg. That's all tied to charge migration. This is the only thing that which is exported from mem control we want to see outside of mem control C. <laughs> could it could it be? Could it be? Hello. Could it be yeah. uh, the implementation change so that it still works, but without all the ugliness, but maybe still doesn't the, the stops working as good, but still with some effort? Or is it implementation it, it is such a way that this is impossible? It, it depends if you want your staff to underflow or not. <laughs> Like if you say underflowing staff is good enough, uh, I, I I don't really see a way, right? Because you ha you have to lock it in order for the for the accounting to be accurate. So the only deteriorated version of this would be inaccurate accounting. I don't know if that's going to work. Are uh, were there any reports since the deprecation, like from users? No, none yet. So what we can do is uh, to uh, spread that warning to older kernels because uh, those are still in use. Uh, we are st just getting to 6.4. So, uh, yeah, but we are not using uh, LTS instance, right? So, uh, what, what, and, and rel probably uh, neither. So, what we can do is just to cherry pick that patch. We have done that for use hierarchy um, in the past. We have learned about a couple of users who just done that oh, okay. by an accident. Uh, so yeah, w we can do that, uh, wait a year, and then just uh, return a hard failure okay. and see if something breaks. If something breaks, then we would have to revert that uh, 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 returning failure. And uh, But I guess that it would be mostly somebody doing that just from habits rather than intentionally. 
So mainly you're saying like all the, 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 the distributions, like ask them to also cherry pick and their kernels. Yes, well. yes, because that would spread the usage quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's my experience that it's usually outdated uh, uh, um, container stacks that are touching all sorts of different files without a good reason. And they just need to be told about that, that th okay. this is going away. Right, right. Can I chime in for a second? Yeah, my somewhat controversial take here is like we should be the add amount option for C group V2 to prohibit all moves of processes and threads between C groups uh, and just use clone 3 for entering uh, the right C group. Then it kind of it solves this problem and also removes like uh, why it's good. Like uh, right now, uh, a process can be at any uh, time moved asynchronously to the different C groups. So whenever a process uh, is uh, touching any like C group structures. It's, it needs like at least our CU locking sometimes more. And like if you make this uh, relation stable, right, like then you can access your own C group and like the whole hierarchy of C groups without any locking. And it's quite beneficial on many hot paths. Uh, I kind of use this trick for uh, object C group uh, accounting speed up recently. Uh, but I think it's just better, right? And there is no really good reason to move the task between C groups back and forth. So, uh, most, in most cases, what everybody does, they like spawn a helper which enters the right C group and exact the right process. So clone 3 is definitely a better thing. So maybe we just need to think of deprecating the C group procs and like all similar interfaces all together eventually, but it will be like really C group 2.1. Something. Okay, that that doesn't that doesn't really clone three with clone into C group wouldn't really work for Android. Um, I mean, I'm in favor of well, killing this feature. Um, I guess uh, the main the main reason uh, the clone three approach wouldn't work is because of the naming in our hierarchy. We don't we need to know a name before a destination name before the the clone happens, and we don't have that um, in the Android. And Android, yeah, uh, it's currently the PID, so doesn't doesn't so work, does it? Clone three doesn't require uh, PDFD or I don't know. So so mainly, I think what Roman is saying that the alternative here in the V two is the like directly clone into the or like for into the target. And for the Android, you're saying at the moment it's hard or it's not possible to get the target. Right, upfront. right, because <clears throat> we name it after the PID, which comes after the fork. So, but, but you're not using this feature at the moment, right? Not move charge, but he's talking about he's talking about cloning, right? Uh, and so, sorry, may I ask who is who's saying this? Because like, oh, I can see. hi, this is uh, TJ Mercier from uh, Android. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah, because yeah. This, this is a very interesting topic. Yeah, I'll reach out to you later. Thanks. TJ, I think what you're asking is for a method to rename C groups after they've been created. Yes. Which requires or taking something. a lock. <laughs> so I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, I think or that's a separate discussion. We can, like, uh, how to help you uh, there. But uh, I would say orthogonal to this one. Okay. All right, let me, let me jump to the next one. Okay. So this is the one which I really want to, like, uh, throw away. Uh, so the, this is the, the TC memory of the V1. Uh, it's an opt-in and it's a, like a very separate counter. Uh, in the V2, uh, it is actually the like char network memory is charged as the memory. Now, uh, my claim is no one is actually using it because it, the performance of this V1 is horrible. And we have, uh, for the V2, we actually did a lot of like work to make it uh, like performant. And I don't think so anyone using it and not complaining. So here, this is another, like I said, like uh, I don't expect anyone to use and I think we should be like, easy to remove as well. Can we, do, can we do the same thing? First warning. Yeah. And we will just make sure that we yeah, yeah, uh, just uh, cherry pick that pitch to slash older versions, find out whether somebody complains and, and do the same thing. I, I also think that this uh, this interface should die. Yeah, so so uh, here deprecation process by same, like add the warning, backward the LTS or, or, and also distributions 
and see if someone is using. But this is, I'm pretty sure no one is using because the, the performance is horrible with this one. All right, uh, that's uh, kind of interesting, uh, the next one, the soft limits. This is, uh, again, uh, a best effort, uh, like memory protection sharing kind of a feature in the V1. Uh, it is bro already broken for the, uh, like, or like disabled for the uh, preempt RT kernels. The V2 has uh, more clear semantics for the memory.min and the low, which is uh, the protection. Here, I know Google actually like remove all this and they have their own implementation, which is very similar to memory.min. And uh, yeah, here I'm kind of saying, uh, again, uh, anyone actually using this thing or, or if they are, what's the, like I use it? I think the Google is still actively using the soft limit mm -hmm. in Python. Google is not using this. Google so it's using this. the API file. They, they use the, the they delete the code and uh, just use the API for something else, they, which is actually the memory dot main. <laughs> no real objection. Uh, I would just point out that. Uh, uh, probably the whole MCG doesn't matter at preempt RT, and if somebody believes, then it's probably wrong. Hmm. So if we move it under the config option, we can make it mutually exclusive with preempt RT as a whole, MCG one, right? Oh yeah, so that's a good point. So uh, you're saying MCG one exclusive or with the RT? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting, yeah. Okay, uh, let me go through. Yeah, that's another uh, thing. I, I so so this is uh, interface for all the like uh, counters where whenever the usage is higher than the limit, this count get incremented. Uh, this is there is no like a uh, kind of reclaim or success or something. This is just there. And I'm wondering if anyone's actually using, we don't expose at the moment this thing in the V2, but uh, if anyone is using this and for what? And if we, like, this is kind of easy to add in the V2, but, but I, I would like to know like uh, what would be the actual use case. Yeah. I haven't seen anything except that uh, just to collect the data and show it because uh, somebody just enjoys looking at that. Okay. Uh, but it's also something that it's almost free of uh, yeah. for ma from maintenance point of view. So yep. removing that or going through a uh, very elaborate uh, deprecation process is probably more work than it than it deserves. Yeah, I would like to add that uh, uh, Google test framework use those and to verify like there are certain things happen or did not happen. Testing. Okay. All right. All right. Isn't uh, wouldn't. C group events be a replacement for this in V2? C group? Dot events. Uh, the, uh, you, you're saying memory is, is, dot events. Yeah, isn't there an event when uh, we so go over so the So those are different, right? Uh, so there memory is events. low, high, and uh, um, and max. So basically those are kind of a limits which you hit and then you increment the counter. This is uh, like there, there are multiple uh, there and those, do we increment those like after reclaim or before reclaim? Some of them before reclaim as well, right? Okay. But but yeah, uh, most probably I think those are pretty useful. But I, I think as Michael saying, like uh, we can just keep it as it. Uh, no need to make more work for us. All right. Okay. This is the one uh, I do want to go into like details. So C group V one first thing the, the notifications. Uh, there are three different types. They are disabled for the RT kernels. And each one, like one thing is like the, the, to use the Vman uh, notification, it, it's first thing is very weird interface, uh, but setting that aside. So th there are three different uh, use cases for the, for the Vman. Let me go through one by one. So th this is uh, kind of uh, interesting, uh, the memory usage net, uh, notification. It, what it does is like any user can say, if my usage go above something, some threshold, notify me. Uh, there are different semantics, but that's uh, what it provides. Uh, 
so first thing like uh, any like and this is even like before uh, like uh, any reclaim or something so this is kind of not a good interface if you want to think about uh, how much when you should increase the limit or not because everything this usage uh, this notification happens before if you have a lot of reclaimable, uh, reclaimable memory then this is not really giving you what you might be looking for so yeah any uh, users here here but uh, kind of uh, i think what our alternative yeah yeah you will probably notice a trend and then like google use this interface as well and it's actually the primary interface they use for the uh the job control to raise limits and and then do the umq related stuff as you know isn't there um control badness or what was the or uh anyways uh there's no notification on um control For, for the usage, we actually expose it. For that usage notifications, we actually expose it to the workload. So they get to do what they want with it. And so I can't tell you exactly what they're doing, but okay. it is exposed to individual workloads. And they get notifications based on their usage. And some of them, I'd imagine, would cut down before even hitting the limit uh, if they have like memory to spare. So even beyond like managing the, uh, the machine, the individual workloads have different use cases for it. So, so for the V2, let's say, is this a blocker for 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 you folks or and how you're going to use it uh, let's say how we should be exposing in the v2 let's say we we we, we to, to, to get you a comprehensive answer we'd have to look into how different workloads are using it and then report back because it's not just one uh it's not just the mo node management it's different workloads using it differently okay so, so i think it's possible to implement it using ppf kind of as a workaround Right, but it's, it's, as I said, since it's individual workloads, not just the node management software, it's much more difficult to get different workloads to use BPF, especially that some of them are not privileged. No, you can, like, uh, I think with the BPF, you don't really need to, like, uh, Roman, you, you can uh, uh, comment better, I think, here. But, but you don't need to have, a, like, a node controller only use the right. You can have this BPF, anyone, like, system-wide install, and all the users can be able to use it, right? I right, think but, so, yeah. Right, but what I'm, getting, what I'm trying to say is we have to get different applications to switch to using the PPF interface, which is much harder than just having the node controller. Yeah, so so you, you, the APIs you are providing to the, uh, to, to the application, G contain. Uh, so basically, that should remain the same, but the internal low level, you can either use these APIs if there is, or if you're V2, use the PPF stuff. You mean by exposing a file on PPFS for that? To, uh, to allow it for unprivileged? Uh, processes. That's the only way to do it, right? Roman? No, I mean, it will be definitely more work for you on the user space side, 100%. Like, also, if it's, there is kind of a trade off, right? This feature is not exactly free because, like, uh, you need uh, certain comparison operators and the very hot pass and, like, and, like, also code maintenance and so on and so on. So maybe, maybe, like, BPF is a reasonable pass here instead of like repeating the whole thing for V2. Is this feature that it, uh, that we can just keep there in a V1 file and just let it be? That's a, like that's one. Yes, let it be. But, let, but I think the, the other folks who are in the V1 using it, like uh, we kind of providing them motivation. Hey, move to V2. Shouldn't they, they use PSI? No. Yeah, yeah. And I, I would uh, like I, I would go, uh, gonna come back to the PSI for the for the pressure level, but but here it's it's kind of giving the just the usage, right? It's there is no like a pressure. It doesn't tell you pressure. So if uh, I think for the Google, or you have a comment. I think you you comment and then I can respond. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I just responding to the BPF thing. I think. Uh, I would like to see more actual usage so we can do experiment to verify those BPF can satisfy on me. Right now, it's just a hand waving, oh, BPF solve everything. But yeah, so we, we, are not we, know, we don't know whether actually we try to use BPF and whether it will actually work out. Definitely. Uh, I think that's what Roman was saying. Uh, there's definitely work needed. But I think uh, one thing, uh, if you guys report back like how you're using it, 
and based on that uh, then we can come up with a solution and it will be like not just you it will be more general to any v2 user as well fair enough All right so it's to do you folks All right cool okay so this is the the interesting one uh, all of those are uh, so here ohm notification the v1 uh, again uh, it so it has multiple kind of uh, it allows you to disable the ohm killer uh, it give you like if you read it gives you status of the ohm killer and the stats and then you can also have the notification it basically like uh, the use case was to uh, implement a user space ohm killer uh, through through this interface now v2 provide a kind of like not, it does provide the notification alternative like uh, i notify on the memory dot event uh, but v2 you cannot really disable ohm uh, ohm killer uh, here uh, oh yeah you can yeah you can like that's that's why uh, memory high was introduced right so the task is slowed down um, there's no ohm killing the task is being slowed down and throttled and then you can you can have a user space ohm killer uh, act on that signal. Oh, memory that, that was the idea behind how to do it in C group two, right? Yeah, yeah. It's that was the like, direct replacement for it. Uh, actually, I try like at Google, like I try to use exactly like uh, to have the ohm killer based on the memory dot high uh, in the like alternative uh, to like migrate from internal Google to this. Uh, and actually, like if you see. I did actually more uh, like a, a thrashing there to get some time. And even then in the production, at least in Google, we saw that there was things leaking and, uh, and the controller or node controller responding slower and it getting um killed uh, still. So again, uh, it, it is an alternative, but I think uh, what might, we might be uh, here looking for is maybe more reliable. And particularly, I think Google currently, again, you guys can comment as well. Uh, uh, so what I understand from their use case is their whole like job sizing kind of depend upon their like this similar feature, uh, which uh, there's whom they uh, like increase the limit or decide to let it kill, like die, these kinds of things. So having uh, memory dot high, I think they tried, uh, it doesn't work uh, like reliably. But uh, yeah, you have a point. So two, two notes on that. Uh, OM control is broken for years because uh, it only allows you to control OM when it happens from the page fault path, which really might not be yeah. relevant for many, many workloads. So uh, I don't think that we want anything resembling uh, that. I think it should yeah. be just V1 slowly rotting thing. Uh, the overhead of the code should be quite small. We have that hook into uh, page fault path that has to check that uh, it has to wait for user space, which is, which is kind of yeah. annoying, but I'm not really sure that that's a, such a big deal. And uh, uh, so what should be done instead, uh, as you are saying that uh, memory high might not be as reliable as we would like to have it, uh, but um, there is a general let's say requirement to have a let's say better policy control over what OM killer does and maybe that's a better fit even for uh, on the MCG uh, level so uh, we have discussed in the past potential BPF involvement and uh, and that might be what mm -hmm. users might be looking and it it would kill two birds with a single stone because uh, you would have something for MCG and for the global OM as well there was discussion on the like I'm not sure who was involved in the BPF based home killer. There was this uh, Roman. Were you part in the discussion or? Yeah, I think it was like this uh, mem line meeting, right? Okay. I I just wanted to add, um, mm -hmm. like um, at Meta, we're doing um, memory high, memory max, um, user space home killing. Like it it does work. I mean, maybe maybe it doesn't work in the Google specific use case, but. You know, it's it's not that it, it was like just a, a theoretical thing, right? It actually does work for a lot of people in practice. So I, the only reason I'm saying it, right, I think we should keep this in mind when we consider the scope of maintaining these features. You know, 
how many users are benefiting from having this around. With the BP of everything in the user space, right? Uh, no, anyways, uh, TJ, you have a comment. Yeah, I was just going to plus one the memory.high thing. I'm planning to do that with Android as well. Um, plus one to what? Uh, yeah, using memory.high and user space, um killing. Oh, so the Android Oom killer is successful. It's not that way today, but um, I've got a demo where uh, we can uh, protect the system processes from apps that would otherwise cause thrashing and. Okay. Yeah. So we have e two examples where yeah. memory dot high is working for Android and for the Meta. Yep. Okay. All right. Right. But yeah, I think. Uh, Independently, the BPF based one is another way which may be good enough for Google. Anyways, all right. Uh, let me jump to the the next one. So this is the this is kind of uh, like interesting and kind of like uh, I kind of hate it uh, is. So this is uh, like a pressure memory pressure notification which is VM uh, like which is V1 only. Uh, it has a lot of issues. It's not really reliable. It's a kind of best effort. It kind of required that the, the allocations which doing the reclaim has to have the allocation for the user space. It assumes there should be a lot of reclaimable memory. And the thing which I don't like is like it's V1 feature. It has been leaked into the V2, particularly for the network memory, uh, like network traffic throttling. And it's not used for V1 TCP memory. It's used for the uh, like a V2 TCP memory, uh, so so th that's another. I know it's being exposed like for the Google G Contain exposed this as well. But uh, I'm wondering anyone actually is using this thing. Uh, we have like I think PSI, PSI is the like a right alternative here, but what it ta will take uh, folks to move to like PSI, or if someone is currently here using it. Is Google use this? No? No? Yeah, so Android used to use it before PSI, but after PSI, pretty much everybody moved, moved to using cool. PSI cool. triggers. We still have that um, weird internal user of this, right? The, uh, the network, network under pressure flag <laughs> is yeah, driven by the pressure, but we've talked about this before that it doesn't really work all that well. But it, yeah, like, I think from a user perspective, you know, if we can deprecate it there, that's one thing. But I think we have to take care of that internal user. Yeah, yeah. So, so internally, that's what like, uh, the, the V2 is actually using it. And uh, so, so I agree, uh, to, like deprecating or removing this uh, should not, like until we have the alternative solution for the, for the network, uh, like throttling, uh, kind of like decouple these two things. But I do want to know, uh, like, if someone is actually using it and PSI is not good enough for them, or, or something like that. Uh, we can, uh, like, I'm thinking of like adding a warning here if you are using it, why PSI or like uh, is, is will not work for you or something like that here. I don't know. <laughs> and backport to the LTS and stuff. But yeah, independently, I'm also kind of looking into like uh, what should be the right. Uh, alternative for the for the network memory or network uh, throttling mechanism. All right. Any any comments or questions there? Okay. The next one might be the yeah the <laughs> here. Uh, so so this is the one I would say is the most controversial. Uh, I, I'm kind of on the. In 2018, LSFMM, mm, uh, I was the one who was kind of pushing, hey, we should expose this into the into the V2. Uh, this is a Lublin article as well on that as well. So, so now on the other side uh, here, I think Google or like most of the V1 users is does Android use MemSW? No. Uh, no. Okay. Not at the moment. Okay. Cool. <laughs> So uh, Google, I know they are still using it. Uh, I think uh, here, I think for the question is like, we can kind of like, okay, as we are saying, let it be and uh, let it remain there forever. That's one. Uh, I, I don't know what's the like, uh, or kind of I'm like Google is just one example, but I'm kind of thinking like any other V1 user who is using this thing, they kind of have to do the same thing, but 
Google is supposed to do on their V2 migration, right? So what's the thing? You are working on it, or like, what's the? <laughs> uh, yes, but Google have to have some really ugly internal hack to like make this thing expose in the V2. So it would the, be the thing is like if if there are a lot more users who have to do the similar hack, then we should have a like better way to do like. A solution for yeah, you. Yeah, right? it would be nice to have a but, better uh, way to do it rather than maintaining this. So, so uh, I think the one question is like, who else uh, is uh, having this the same like challenges? Johannes, you have you have comment or? or? Uh, Shaquille, may I chime in for a second? Yeah, I think from a technical standpoint, I recently touched page counters code, and I think it's it's. Like, I mean, if we, we can, in theory, add the mount option and like have this, you know, specific Google specific feature, right? It, from a technical standpoint and even from a maintainability standpoint, it's not a big problem, right? It's fairly related, right? Like, so we, I mean, four or five places which needs to be tweaked. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. If, I, I don't think it's such a big okay. controversy here. It should be fairly easy to do, but like, yeah, the question is like, who is who is who is doing that? Google will. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I, I, guess. so uh, I think before that, I think Michael and Johannes, you you had uh, so so mainly. I think uh, Roman is saying mount option and kind of like using so Roman using the same like memory dot lib, memory dot max memory dot main but underlying using memsw or. or what was it, it like it swap, swap, swap marks. Oh, okay. okay, the swap one, okay. Yeah, swap will just include memory, yes. So, oh yeah, the swap will include memory, okay. <laughs> Johannes and Michael. So you, think you think that we would have uh, mount dot dash o Google and... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm not a great fan of that, uh, but uh, if that's the only option and uh, it's better be really good reasoning that I, I'm not ruling that out, but uh, uh, it's it's kind of awkward to have two completely different swapping modes and support both of them. I'm not sure whether that can bite us later. I mean, if it, if it helps us to kind of deprecate the whole we want, so I think like we can really kind of rely on, rely here on Google's good faith to move forward. <laughs> I, I would just sit and wait on that and make Google realize that uh, they have so many other great features in V2 that they would find their own way how to get rid of that swapping model uh, and use the one that we have in V2. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Mike. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You three. Yeah, there is just no alternative uh, to that in V2. Like, for other things we discussed, there's maybe some things that are similar enough or like workarounds you can do. There's just no way forward for this feature. And from a code perspective, it would be easy enough to support it with a mount option. We already have a lot of, if V1 do uh, mem swap, if V2 do separate swap accounting, so that would just check the mount option instead. So I just said, like, there's, there's no alternative. It's not a difficult implementation wise, so maybe we could meet in the middle. I don't know. I think here one might another like point might be like other than Google, is there if there are more users who are have a strong dependency on this one? So there are users of V1. I don't know if they're used specifically, but uh, for example, on the PBS side, there has been people I think from a company called Didi. I'm not exactly sure that have been working on a lot of Seeger V1 support in PPF. So they are using V1. Okay. I'm not sure exactly they're using this, but I can tell that it's not just Google using V1. You no, know, even I, I understand. Like th there are users. Uh, well, like like intentional users. The category that Michael talked about. Intentional users that are using V1, knowing the consequences. I guess. Okay. So uh, I think we, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to ask a question. So um, 
and, and it was mentioned how long it's, it's taken um, for Google to adopt memory and swap accounting. Uh, is a mount option really that difficult to support? Or is, 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 it, is it not palatable uh, to move forward with a mount option if it means that for all other features that Shaquille has listed today, that a transition to Sigu V2 would be possible? I mean, as it's been mentioned, there is no alternative here for V2. Could we make that happen? And as maybe even an incremental step that in the future, if we consider uh, later on, yeah, if there's use to clean up the code and remove that mount option, great if we can do it. But otherwise, it seems like the status quo would be much, much better if we could be Sigur V2 adopters. Once we have that mount option, we will never ever remove that and we just carve that into so. And that's the reason what I'm really reluctant to have such a bimodal mode. <laughs> Especially if there is only a single user out there. If there are other users and, and, and we can learn about them and learn about their challenges, because we keep hearing your challenges. And, and they're, I mean, th that's kind of fair, but uh, uh, if we don't have anybody else, then is that worth maintaining, even though the, the code footprint is really small? Yeah. I think that we are not talking about uh, how much code o overhead that has because that, that that's not the point. The point is that uh, we have learned in the past that uh, even features that are small with respect to a code footprint might kick back heavily. And that's what I'm more worried about. Yeah, so I, I think either next LSFMM or this one, we need to have that session on how to how to correctly deprecate an MM feature uh, because a lot of this talk is going to go directly to that. Why do you think that a mount option is more difficult to deprecate than a user-facing interface that even users have direct control over? Mount options are root only. We'd be able to mount Sigur V2 with it. But we're talking about in this talk, like getting rid of memory.move charge at immigrate, creating a warning, deprecating over a number of years. Why is, why is the mount option more difficult to deprecate? Because the feature is available for V2, which is supposed to be prime thing. It's not about mount option or uh, whatever other means that you use to make that appear in V2. Um, I'm, I'm just not really happy about having that in V2 in the first place. So, so V2 has a no deprecation policy? Unless somebody comes up with V3. <laughs> okay. Maybe a mount option for swap accounting. <laughs> I don't want to shock from the rest of the conversation. Thank you. No, no, that, that's good to like. At least I think one thing here is to actually find out if there are anyone else also kind of dependent here. So it will make the case stronger. Yeah, and uh, sorry, can I uh, add two cents here? So maybe it's worth just refactoring the code a little bit without like even exposing this as a mount option explicitly, but right, if you can, I don't know, have a, a defined thing in the code which allows you easily to switch between two modes or like just kind of factor out all these uh, places into like, I don't know, clean helpers that may, maybe like people can maintain a very small uh, patch set internally which will expose the interface but like rely on uh, the code being nice to that change, something like this. This is the last slide. Any any other question, comments? Otherwise, it's that end. This one. Memory dot swappiness. We already have in. We have no. V two is like it's a global one, right? Why? Yeah, just global. Um, in the in the V two, you know. Oh. We can disable it. It's there's, on. There's a pro proactive replay in past. The, uh, yeah. Well, it's been proposed. I think Android hasn't merged it yet, but it's been sitting in the MM3. So it's there's no per C group setting, but there is a per proactive yeah, replay. Yeah, the proactive reclaim memory dot reclaim has uh, like a, you can like it's still in the MM3. But but uh, oh. I think coming back to your uh, you you're asking memory dot swapness. You know, I should have added here. So you're saying uh, like that's currently used. Um, yeah. Michael, yeah. 
Is it being uh, currently used by Android? We've had users complaining that it doesn't work because uh, it does work as it's designed <laughs> in V1 because it just gets that value in the root C group early when you mount it for the first time or whether root uh, C group is created and then whenever you change the swap in us, then it just doesn't propagate to all the uh, C groups that are existing and you users are probably. heavily confused about that. So I would rather not repeat that in, in V2. We can follow like uh, we can follow up uh, on the like how exactly uh, like you're using it and we can have alternative like for example, the proactive reclaimer, we kind of added uh, the sport. It's still an MMT, hopefully in the next window or something. But we, we can discuss. Yeah, in proactive reclaim, it makes sense because it's mm -hmm. well defined. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if uh, it's per C group um, um, uh, property, then you have that clash between the global and, and local. Mm -hmm. And you don't know, is your local just inherited or or we would essentially have to make it well defined, and yeah, and yeah. that's just sounds awkward. It might be like I, I think the problem is the problem is that this like it's not even just a MCG issue, right? It it's a, a C group two entirely issue, right? Because it's not a good value that kind of has a hierarchical meaning, right? Yeah. So for example, we we use it um, we use the proactive reclaimer one uh, internally in order to ultimately to control. Um, uh, um, swap rights uh, in order to uh, control um, SSD uh, wear. And so, you know, if instead we had a limit to say, you know, don't do uh, more swap rights um, than X per second, right? That's something you could, you could set hierarchically and you can restrict it further as you go down. But with swappiness, it doesn't really work like that. So maybe uh, you're kind of saying like some different semantics uh, which have better hierarchical meanings or semantics, yeah. So we, we can discuss yeah. follow-up on that. All right, thank, thanks. Yeah, everyone. it would be, it would be interesting. Go ahead, Johannes. Johannes, you had a comment. Uh, I was just gonna say, it would be interesting to flash out, uh, flash out the, the actual use case, like what are you trying to express? And then maybe we can derive a better, um, a better uh, configuration value from that. All right. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.